Mixing a beat and vocals seems simple. There are less tracks to worry about since we have the stereo beat and a couple vocal tracks. However, there's a lot of room for error since each change that we make will have a big impact on the overall sound. In that regard, it's almost more like stem mastering than mixing. So let's cover how to make your beat and your vocal mix sound professional. By the end of the video, you'll have the info that you need to create fantastic sounding mixes and a demo master of that mix. So starting off, let's establish some levels. Before we add processors, let's determine how loud we want the vocal to be and how loud we want the beat to be. Ideally, they'll be equal in amplitude, although you could vary that slightly as you see fit. On the unprocessed beat and unprocessed vocal, I'll insert an LUFS meter. This free meter by Goodhertz is a great option. I'll let the track play while the meter measures the integrated loudness of each. Now once they're measured, I'll either amplify or attenuate with the clip gain to ensure that they have the same loudnesses. This Goodhertz meter does have the option to match the level to a particular LUFS, but I want to remove this plugin, so I'll keep that figure in mind and then just make the needed changes with some clip gain. It's a simple but often overlooked step. Knowing how you want the vocal and the beat to interact loudness-wise will help you make more informed decisions as you introduce various processors. So let's take a quick listen to the vocal and the beat having their loudnesses matched. I won't never sell my soul. I keep with the flow. I won't never sell my soul, I keep with the flow They gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code I stay underground, I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day Next up, let's edit the vocal. So this step is arguably kind of boring, but it needs to be done for the best sound possible. When editing, I prefer an FFT editor like this RX platform by Isotope. I don't recommend plugins or software all that often, but an editor like this is incredibly valuable to have, even if it's the introductory version. Its gain feature allows for incredibly accurate equalization, which I'll use to create a reasonable level for the sibilance, attenuate any plosives or pops, remove any unwanted noise or electrical pops that occurred during recording, and so on. Now to use it, highlight the range that you want to affect. In this instance, I'm isolating some aggressive sibilance that I want less of. Once it's highlighted, I'll select the gain module and reduce the amplitude of that region by a few dB or as much as needed. Now don't overdo this, otherwise the performer will sound like they have a lisp. Then I'll find the vocal's fundamental frequency. This is indicated by high amplitude notes, usually between 100 and 200 Hz. Once I've found that, I'll highlight the range below it, then select the gain module and completely remove these frequencies. Everything below the fundamental is either noise, rumble, plosives, or any unwanted or unmusical aspects of the performance. Just make sure that you're not affecting the fundamental in any way. Now once I'm done, I'll overwrite the original file, which will replace it automatically in the DAW. Alternatively, you could use clip gain to control sibilance, but it's a lot less accurate. You could also use an EQ and de-essing to control unmusical aspects, but again, they're less accurate. Now it's probably not too popular telling you to use a somewhat obscure platform to perform your editing, but I'm being completely honest here, it makes a huge difference in whether the vocal sounds professionally controlled or like it didn't receive the attention that it needed. So let's take a listen to the vocal before and after this editing. I won't never sell my soul, I keep with the flow. They gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code. I stay underground, I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. I won't never sell my soul, I keep with the flow. They gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code. I stay underground, I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. Real quick. If you're looking for personalized audio engineering services specific to your needs, join the Sage Audio membership. Members get custom mastering and personalized one-on-one -on -one mixing feedback. Go to sageaudio.com or use the link in the description. So with the vocal edited, let's use EQ to control the vocal and the beat. So I've inserted an EQ on the vocal and an EQ on the beat. What I want to do is shape the two around one another so that they blend naturally. This will look a little different from song to song, however, dipping a little of 250 hertz on both the beat and the vocal will help introduce some clarity. Meanwhile, a small boost around 3 kHz on the vocal will help it sit forward, something we might need to account for later on if it alters the loudness too much. 
If the vocal has some nasally tones, I could decrease somewhere between 700 and 1.3 kHz, depending on where that resonance is. Meanwhile, I could slightly boost this on the beat to help it mask some of that tone. Now while we're here, we might as well control some of the stereo image of the beat. A midside EQ is a great option for this. I'm using the Pro-Q3, but ZL Equalizer is a fantastic free alternative. With it, I'll attenuate some of the beat's side image up to 80 Hz with a high-pass filter, again with its placement set to the side image. Then I could boost a little of 400 Hz on the side image to make it sound fuller without creating a muddy or a boomy sound. Lastly, some high-frequency expansion usually sounds good. A high shelf on the side image does this well. If the kick and the bass are lacking, I could use a mid-image filter to amplify their fundamentals. If the snare is getting buried, I could find its fundamental or an overtone and boost that slightly. Now just keep in mind that any change you make will greatly impact the sound since we're dealing with the full stereo beat here. Let's take a quick listen to these changes. I'll compensate for the loudness variations to keep that one-to-one -one relationship between the beat and the vocal's loudness. I won't ever sell my soul. I keep with the flow. Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code. I stay underground, I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. I won't ever sell my soul. I keep with the flow. Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code. I stay underground, I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. Next up, let's create a crisp vocal chain. So I've covered this chain before, but in greater detail in a video titled, How to Create Crisp Vocals, I'll link that below if you want an in-depth explanation. Now after the EQ, if needed, use a de to control the sibilance, although the editing that we did should have that covered. Then, introduce a compressor with a 4 to 1 ratio, a softer knee, a quick attack, 50 millisecond release, and a couple milliseconds of look ahead. Try to achieve about 6 to 8 dB of attenuation. Now I'm using the Pro C2, but a great affordable alternative is Tone Booster's Compressor version 4. Automatic makeup gain combined with these settings will bring a lot of the vocal's quieter details to the front. If it's needed, use a vocal tuner at this point, after the compressor, to help it achieve a more accurate reading. Then, introduce some mild saturation, ideally tube saturation, to give the vocal a slightly more aggressive and biting sound. Next, I'm going to create two sends from the vocal. One will compress the highs, and the other is just a duct reverb send. Starting with the compressed highs send, first insert a linear phase EQ and isolate the highest frequency range. Insert a compressor next and compress heavily. Lastly, introduce a subtle reverb, one with airy highs should work well, and use a low mix amount for the wet dry. Moving on to the second send, we'll introduce our primary reverb. Use whichever reverb that you like and you think works well for the track and set its wet dry to 100%. Then, insert a compressor and set the original vocal track as the external sidechain. Set quick settings, but avoid any automatic makeup gain. This will compress the initial part of the reverb, reducing its level during the vocal's transient. This helps to retain intelligibility. Alternatively, you could just use pre-delay, but this pushes back the start of the reverb. The ducking that we've set here causes less reverb on the vocal's transient, depending on how aggressively we've compressed. It sounds a bit more natural in my opinion, and it gives the vocal a more cohesive sound. Lastly, blend these two aux tracks in with the original signals via their faders. Now if you want some additional control over the original vocal and these two sends collectively, change their outputs to the same bus, and all three will be routed to that new bus. So let's take a listen to the processed vocal, and notice how it's getting a lot closer to a polished sound than before. I won't never sell my soul. I keep with the flow. Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me bold, no. I stick to the code. I stay underground. I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. I won't never sell my soul. I keep with the flow. Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow. Hardly see me cold. I stay underground. I should lie how I roll, but I've been grinding all day. Last up, let's maximize, limit, and create a quick master. Now when you found a beat or someone made it for you, it's more or less already mixed. Odds are it's gone through some limiting and maximization as well. Regardless, it doesn't hurt to subtly maximize it a little more and maybe introduce some limiting as well. The processor that you pick is up to you. I'm going to use the enhanced function of this Sonics limiter and then the Pro L2 to push it higher while allowing some of the true peaks to get across. This should help it sound a little louder 
after normalization. If you're curious as to why, check out our video about making a track loud after normalization. Then, I'll insert a maximizer on the vocal bus. Again, this includes the original vocal and the two auxiliary or parallel tracks that we created. I'm not going to limit it, just increase the quieter details to bring up the overall loudness. Now at this point, if you need to make adjustments to the compressed high frequency range aux track or the parallel reverb track, you could definitely do that. If you want a final EQ on the stereo output to shape everything at once, you could do that, but you'll likely need another limiter to protect from overs. Lastly, I'll check one more time to ensure that the two signals have equal loudnesses. So let's take a listen to the finished mix and quick master. How you approach this process may be a little different, but this is a great way to create fantastic results. I won't ever sell my soul, I keep with the flow Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code I stay underground, I should learn how I roll But I've been grinding all day I won't ever sell my soul, I keep with the flow Life gon' weigh you down, but he teach me to flow Hardly see me bold, no, I stick to the code I stay underground, I should learn how I roll But I've been grinding all day as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for personalized audio engineering services specific to your needs, join the Sage Audio membership. Members get custom mastering and personalized one-on-one -on -one mixing feedback. Go to sageaudio.com or use the link in the description.